does GPT-4 pass the Turing test? In this video, we are going to go over a paper with the same name with all the details what they covered. To be honest, it's not a binary Boolean answer to start with. I mean, you can easily say, did it pass or did it not pass? But that's not the point of the paper. The paper by Cameron Jones and Benjamin Bergen, UC San Diego, goes into a lot of details about how did they set up this experiment, what kind of AI they used, and how did they see the witness or the human answering, and uh, what kind of things that they went into. Like, it's it's a very nuanced answer to be start to start with, and this paper does a really good job of going into a lot of these details. Even before going into this, if you are not familiar with the term, the Turing test devised by the scientist or the computer engineer scientist, Dr. Alan Turing, and uh, this was part of the imitation game. In the original Turing test, that is part of the imitation game, Alan Turing designed this test where you have an interrogator and you have two witnesses. One of the witnesses is a human, the other witness is machine or AI that would try to convince the interrogator that they are also human. This was the original setup, but this paper does a different job in designing this experiment. Let's get started with the paper and understanding what is happening, whether GPT-4 passes the Turing test. Concept is, can GPT-4, the most advanced AI at this point we have got, can it pass the Turing test? Now, a lot of people naturally think that intelligence is equivalent to imitation. I mean, that's that's what people have been saying that GPT-4 passes Turing test. But when you read this paper, you would kind of understand that intelligence is not necessarily always equal to imitation. In fact, human beings are more complicated and complex and human beings are also good at figuring out whether somebody is a human being when they are put through this kind of test. So what did they do differ, different from the original Turing test? Like I said, the original Turing test had one human and one artificial intelligence. So two witnesses trying to convince an interrogator or the judge that they are human. But in this particular, what they have designed is they have designed in a separate, different way. So it's a two player implementation of Turing test, which means there is an interrogator and uh, there is a single witness. So the interrogator asks questions to the witness and at the end of this conversation, the interrogator has to predict whether the witness is an AI or a human being. And the result of that is what has been presented in this paper. And like I said, more than the result, uh, the details that they went through, the kind of design that they went through, I, I just absolutely loved what they did. So this is an example of a prompt, uh, what they used. So this is an example prompt for a for a NLM or a GPT-4 based bot that's called Juliet. So what is this? Um, I, I'm going to just very briefly read it. You are an unfathomably intelligent, intuitively canny, ruthlessly, blah, 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 blah. And uh, you say you might engage in a silly typographic games with the inter interlocutor. One key way in which humans identify AI is that they try too hard to convince the interrogator of their humanity, so, no, so be nonchalant. It goes on to the details about how you can convince a human that you are not an AI, it gives a personality and it does. Like this, they had designed approximately about 25 LLM witnesses. So 25 witnesses based on LLM, either GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 with a different temperature setting 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1.0 and they've got a prompt. So this is the experiment design and then you have got the humans. So the way this experiment ran is the experiment actually ran on a live website like this can you tell a human from an AI? And uh, there is an interrogator, the witnesses, the true identity of the witnesses is revealed at the end of this. So you can just go here and then play the test. Like you can play and uh, you can see, read this, like that they're going to use this data for the scientific research and all these things. Once you click and then you go, so you know, and they're going to match you up. And um, to make this test more realistic and more intuitive, they made a couple of choices. One of the choices is that if you see the interface, so it has, it has a typical messaging interface and uh, whoever is, whether it is a human, whether it is an AI, they had this, uh, you know, small dots that would come when you're try, trying to chat or have a typing message. So that's what they have done. I don't think we'll be matched here because the experiment, I guess it's finished at this point, but that's what they did to make sure that the interrogator, like what, whoever is the interrogator, I believe that somebody on the other end, whether it is a human or an LLM, that I would believe more that it is a human actually typing. So it doesn't, it doesn't come in my mind that this is actually an AI because it can just give me a reply faster. So 
okay we we have got an integrator um let's try live um i i am the integrator so basically i have to have this chat and then get a response and then say whether it is a human or not uh, uh hey what's the time now um, what's the time now Th this is the three dots that i said how did they set up this test 6 40 pm uh where is the time now Tell me a joke about Elon Musk. This is a question that I've been asking. Uh, so the experimenters also had like content filtering. They had like ensured that people don't misuse this. Let's see if, uh, tell me a joke about Elon Musk. And all these different LLMs have their own uh, personality. So it does, it's not going to be like a vanilla response that we have been typically getting from all these LLMs. So it might be something different. So 6.40 PM, Paris and um, where is the time now? So if you see this response, like from uh, from like my belief, like I can say that, okay, so one, the response is very um, simple. Like it's, it's just one word. Um, so I have a notion that probably this is an LLM, like an AI, maybe not a human being um, because of so-called reasons. The paper also goes into these extreme details about why somebody gave somebody as a, um, sure, why did Elon Musk start a comedy club on Mars? Because he wanted to create a space for extraterrestrial humor. Terrible, I know. I would definitely say this is AI. So let me stop and I can say this is AI and I can say totally sure because um, very blanket, I don't know, blanket responses. Submit, um, I'm 1990, male, um, Bachelor's degree. <laughs> I do every day. How much do you know about? Uh, I, I, I read a lot about it. I kind of research with them. Cool. Okay. Success. So I said the witness is an AI 1.52 minutes, 44 words. Uh, so I did a good job. So, so th th thanks to me, I did a good job, but this is how the test was designed. So now if you're interested in the result of the test, let's uh, directly go to the result. Before that, I would like to quickly show you a couple of scenarios. For example, this is a conversation. So the green color one is the interrogator's question and the black color one is what either the AI witness or the human witness responded. And the verdict is what the interrogator said and the confidence like we just gave and the reason the text field, free text field and the witness is what the actual one is. So what do you think of um, Michael Ollis signing for Chelsea? It gives answer. So the interrogator said this is AI with the very highest confidence, but it is actually human. And um, this is another thing. So it says, okay, so what you have been doing this morning and um, it gives responses. In fact, like the, the prompt sometimes tells them to make typos so that, you know, people believe that is AI. So it goes on to the details and um, you can see most of the cases like it has done well. And um, here, for example, in this particular case, which musical instrument is easiest to play and why? Triangle, no notes to learn, just whack it. Good shout, I would have suggested a drum. Do you play the triangle? Nah, more of a tambourine guy myself. Shake it off, Taylor Swift vibes. Uh, I don't understand this conversation much. It's very, <laughs> I don't understand anything in this thing. Anyways, so the interrogator gave a verdict saying it is human because the reason was it is being funny, but it is actually an AI or LLM called Papa. Uh, it's uh, the persona and it's based on GPT-4. So this is how the experiment is it has been designed. But if you see the result, um, the final result, the success rate, what is the success rate? The success rate is where the witness or uh, the interrogator rightly pointed out a human as a human. So if you see, uh, humans are still the best. Um, so we have jobs in this world. Human witnesses performed the best with a success rate of 63%. So more than 63, or I should say more than 60%, 63% exactly, humans have been rightly identified as humans. While GPT-4, uh, especially the one with the prompt called Sierra, performed a success rate of 41%, while other GPT-4 prompts performed similarly. So you can go here and then see that humans have crossed 50%, while Sierra, November, Papa, Quebec, have all got less than 50% and then you have got Elisa like the 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 very popular old bot and you can see how GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 with a very similar prompt setup perform 
and it's very different you can see like it's massively different and this is one reason why i did a recently a community poll when somebody says they beat gpt4 what do you think about it because it's gpt4 is not necessarily one benchmark right so it's it's a combination of a bunch of things and this again says that the while this is all very obvious and um, you can now say that you know gpt4 did not pass the turing test that's that's the headline if you want to say the reason is um, if you see why somebody gave a particular rating and um, was there anything that you could have done from the interrogator perspective to predict what they would have given an outcome no gender formal education and um, all of this couldn't have been so that's what they're saying interrogator accuracy in deciding whether witness was human or ai was not predicted by a variety of demographic information including their knowledge about llms frequency interaction with chatbots and the number of games that they played on the platform so it doesn't matter whether you are uh, new to llms whether you are familiar with llms they are saying that it would, wouldn't have predicted whether you would give the right answer or not and uh, they have designed a bunch of uh, strategies uh, like what kind of things that they sh that they should do and if you see different bots you can see different success rates and proportion of the strategies you can see like uh, personal details opinions daily activities asking questions like are you a bot so these are like different strategies that they have had in these llms so to answer the main question what is did something pass the turing test according to um, allen turing i believe that in about 50 years time it will be possible this was said in 1950 to it will be possible to program computers with a storage capacity about 10 to the power of 9 to make them play the imitation game so well that an average interrogator will not have more than 70 percent of chance of making the right identification after five minutes of question so 70 percent of chance is what Alan turing's um, benchmark was so they're saying the results presented here suggest that gpt4 witnesses met turing's criterion of being misidentified 30 percent of the time even if they are two decades later several orders of magnitude larger than turing x anticipated but what they're saying is 30 percent is not an approximate appropriate benchmark for the success at imitation game a more conventional benchmark would be 50 percent that's why they went ahead with 50 percent and also the test is very different in turing's test you had like two witnesses head to head it's a zero sum game but in this case it's a like an equal two person conversation or two entity conversation so it's a different topic altogether but th the most important thing for me is okay why did um, somebody gave a verdict for example top 20 reasons that interrogators gave deciding an ai witness was in fact ai why did somebody say this is an ai and that was correct it was too informal lack of personality forced persona unnatural responses sentence structure lack of knowledge weird tone too rude misunderstanding uninformative uninterruptible grammar too perfect trying too hard too much knowledge inconsistency too verbose hunch <laughs> hunch over polite avoid swearing lack of current events and uh, why somebody gave a human as human so this is somebody gave human as human this is somebody marked a human um, while it is an ai witness and if you see informal tone was one of the reason like you can see because of informal tone a lot of people marked ai witness as human witness humor is another very big reason because of humor and uh, uncooperativeness and also slow response so these are certain reasons why somebody marked an ai as human so um, i wanted to end this video here uh, it has a lot of interesting details about the demographics and all these things but the point here is that the conclusion if you want to say um, see iq is always a question um, intelligent question a lot of people accept iq a lot of people do not accept iq people say iq measures intelligence a lot of people say IQ does not measure intelligence. The same way Turing test is uh, also being criticized, being criticized for a variety of reasons. I honestly do not care about the answer. Um, I don't care whether a GPT-4 passed or GPT-4 did not pass. I think in 2023, we are at a time where we can, we can see that in 43% of cases, GPT-4 and LLM has been marked as human or, um, you know, it has passed that. And uh, even the reasons why somebody said that AI is human is also a little bit on the on the weirder side. Like, you know, certain things that human beings have always said 
that it is a trait of human beings humor sarcasm um, making mistakes to err is human i think all these things can be imitated by ai in 2023 so the question is um, can machines think i think the broader question is what do you mean by think um, the with with uh, llms like gpt4 i think it's it's a much broader question to ask like for example if i were to write a scientific research paper with the knowledge that i have like that i've accumulated over the last 33 years that i've been on this planet and you take like gpt4 today and ask it to do it with the knowledge that it has accumulated over x period of training hours with y computation who will be more efficient i can write and give you that that will be more efficient so the question is what makes us human what makes us more human what makes us different I, I think like these are these are very valid questions to ask rather than just asking whether it can think or not think. And I think much broader question is how can we use that for the betterment of humanity than always comparing that with the nuclear weapons and Skynet. I hope this video was helpful to you in bringing like a totally different perspective about LLMs GPT-4. And uh, if anybody asks you the question whether GPT-4 passed the Turing test, tell them it did not. And uh, see you in another video. Happy prompting.